Hello everyone, this is Lomi and today I'll be showing you how to put together the pattern I created for Rune's pants. As always, you can find the link to the pattern in the description below. We'll start quick by putting the smaller pieces together. I'm using the same materials as I used for his jacket, with the addition of grey decorator suede for the inner thigh patches. Decorator suede is too heavy for most doll clothing, but it should work for small pieces like this. We'll sew the patches in between the top and bottom pieces of the inner leg parts, creating the front inner and back inner pieces. The pattern may be confusing, but I've done my best to label the pieces and mark where they go together, so you'll have a printed reference right on your pattern. Once the front and back pieces are all together, I go over the edges with a zigzag stitch to finish them. Then it's time to pin one inner front and one inner back piece with right sides together and join them into one piece. Since the decorator suede is so much thicker than the tan micro suede, I make sure the seams where the two colors join are folded to the inside of the gray piece, which will make it lay smoother instead of looking like the tan piece is layered on top of the gray. Merging these two pieces into one will make it easier to add the strap on the inner thigh. I finish the new seam, then pin the back outer piece to the back inner piece. I don't want to put pins through the vinyl I use for the thigh strap, so I put a pin on either side of it to hold it in place. Once it's all pinned, I sew it on, making sure the strap is properly aligned before sewing it into the seam. I trim the extra off the end of the strap so the new seam's edges are flush, then finish it with a zigzag stitch. Now I do the same thing for the other side of the pants. Once the back outer pieces are together, I line up the inner crotch seam on the two halves, pin it together, and sew the crotch seam all the way shut. This is different from modern pants, where the front would be left open for a zipper. Finish the seam, then we'll add the lining for the fall front. Sew the crotch seam on the fall front closed. Make sure you only sew the curve closed, and not the little square piece at the bottom. You can finish this edge if you want, but it's not necessary since it'll be on the inside. Then fold the piece open and finish the bottom edge with a zigzag stitch. Pin it to the front flap on the pants with right sides together. Sew 
sew the sides together, leaving the top and bottom open. The front flap sees a lot of wear and tear, so you might want to backstitch at the bottom of the meeting point to add extra strength. Trim your threads, then turn the flap right side out. Now we'll make the front pockets. Lay the pocket piece against the front outer piece, right sides together, lining up the curve. Sew the curve, then turn the pocket lining to the inside, pin it, and top stitch along the curve of the pocket to hold it down, about 1 8 of an inch from the edge. You might want to trim the seam allowance with pinking shears or cut nicks into the fabric if it doesn't lay smoothly. Fold the pocket lining in half and pin the bottom edge. Sew the bottom edge closed and finish the seam. Add a pin to the side of the piece where the side of the pocket is still open. It'll need to be held in place for now. Some of my pins are really dull, I need to throw some away. Pin the top of the pocket too, where the waistband will be attached. From the edge of the curve to the fold in the pocket lining fabric should be about 3 quarters of an inch. Next, finish the edge of the flap on the front inner piece with a zigzag stitch, and then fold the flap in. You want it to be folded in to the point where the seam on the leg will be, so about one quarter of an inch from the edge under the flap. It's kind of hard to explain, so hopefully you can see it clearly. Sew the flap in place about one quarter inch from the pinned edge. Repeat the same process for the other half of the front. Once that's finished, pin the front outer piece to the front inner piece with right sides together. Make sure the strap is aligned properly, then when you get to the top where the fall front begins, pin the blue flap to just the lining piece of the tan flap. Sew the pieces together, back stitching at the end where the blue flap and tan flap meet. Put the other front piece on in the same way and then finish the edges, making sure to trim the extra off the straps. Now finish the cuffs by folding the bottom edge up one quarter of an inch, then folding it another quarter of an inch, creating a rolled hem.
You can sew this however you please, but since I'm using two different colors of fabric, I start by sewing only the blue parts with blue thread, then I go back and change to tan thread to sew the tan part. Once both cuffs are sewn, it's time to close the side of the pants. Pinning the blue front and back outer pieces together, I backstitch on the cuff and then sew straight up the side. This closes the side of the pocket too. I finish the seams when they're done, turn the pants right side out, then it's on to making the belt loops. I create these by folding the loop pieces into thirds and pinning them down. I use a twin needle to create the belt loops because it saves me time but you can do the same thing by sewing up both sides with a single needle. Since these pieces are so small, I put them on a piece of tearaway stabilizer. This prevents the small pieces from getting stuck in the machine. I don't bother picking all the paper out of the seam since the stabilizer melts in water. Instead, I skip right to pinning the belt loops in place on the edge of the waistband with the right side against the pants. Next we'll make the waistband by sewing the sections together. I do one seam, then check the size against the pants to make sure the seams will line up before I sew the next one. Once this part of the waistband is together, I pin it onto the waist of the pants, lining up the seams on the back. Then I pin the edges around the sides. The waistband is longer than the waistline of the pants, which makes it easier to attach. I fold the extra length to the inside of the blue flap and pin it down. This way there will be no raw corners or stray threads to show at the front opening when it's done. To finish the waistband, I fold the top edge over one quarter of an inch, then fold the waistband in half, pinning it in place. The edge of the inside of the waistband should line up with the seam where the waistband is already attached to the pants.
I sew one eighth of an inch from the bottom edge of the waistband to anchor the inside in place, creating top stitching on the outside at the same time. Then I add top stitching along the top and sides of the waistband. To attach the belt loops I fold them up and cut them so they're about one quarter of an inch longer than the top of the waistband. Then I fold that quarter inch under and pin them in place. I stitch them down by sewing over the top about an eighth of an inch from the edge. I go back and forth a few times to make sure they're secure. At this point my camera's battery was running low, so I'm sorry if things are slightly out of focus. The last piece to add is the waistband for the fall front. It goes on the same way as the rest of the waistband, lining it up on the front flap and folding the ends around to the back side. Sew it on, then fold the top edge and fold the waistband piece in half, then add top stitching to hold it down on the inside. Top stitching on the front and sides gives us a neatly finished front flap. Now all that's left is a good ironing and adding your closure of choice, which can be velcro, snaps, or buttons. I decided to use buttons. And now his pants are done! I'm waiting for materials for his sword to get here before I can start it, so the next part of this project will be creating his gauntlets, footwear, and the light armor he wears beneath his jacket. Thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!